Greetings, YouTubers and DJ enthusiasts. Uh, I'm Terry, and I'm basically making this video because I did a search on how to uh, find. Well, I I was trying to find a video on how to uh, use Sam Broadcaster on Second Life, and I found a lot of videos on tutorials on how to use Sam Broadcaster, which were all well and good. They taught me a lot about Sam Broadcaster, and that's how I learned. I'm a visual learner, so it was very useful to me. But I did not find any videos on how to use Sam Broadcaster with Second Life. So I thought, eh, I'm going to do a public service and make a video on how to use Sam Broadcaster with Second Life. And hopefully I do it in a way that everyone can understand and is very useful to the people. Because that's what I'm trying to do here. Be useful to the people. So first off, and most importantly, you need a stream service to broadcast your music to the people. Uh, you can do this one of two ways. One is which uh, go into the Shoutcast website and uh, buying uh, or renting a stream from them for like a monthly fee. And I've determined that Doing this is more expensive than going to this store in Second Life and paying Linden. It's a lot cheaper in Linden. You pay weekly, but I did the math, and if you add it up to a month, uh, a month's worth of Linden, it's actually a whole lot cheaper this way. Plus, you can make Linden free if you have an SL job, and you earn the Linden a club or something, whatever your job is. So yeah, I've determined that doing it the Linden way is a whole lot better. Uh, let's see, I'm showing you the only streaming store I'm aware of on Second Life. I'm sure there are plenty out there. This is just the first one I came across, and it has been very beneficial to me. It is called TechStream, at TechStuff. Uh, you can read the billboard there. Shoutcast streaming from 150 Linden per week. That is for the 25 listeners. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that in this you are working at a club with low traffic, a club that doesn't get above 25 listeners very often. Sure, it's cheaper, but if the club has more than 25 listeners, then you're leaving a lot of people out with music, and that is a DJ's worst nightmare. You don't want to leave people out because they would definitely be sad without their music. Over here we have the 50 listeners, and this is what I would recommend because most clubs on Second Life don't get above 50 unless they're like really popular clubs that have high traffic all the time. Then I would recommend the 100 listeners, but that's only if you work at a really popular club and expect a lot of listeners. Uh, the different uh, the different amount of listeners are uh, different prices. If you want a hundred with a hundred listeners, that's three hundred Linden a week. You do the math. So I already did the math and. It works out for me, the 50 listeners. It's 200 Linden a week. 
and it suits me just fine. Once you uh, once you pay for the whatever price you want to pay, this is basically saying yes, this two hundred for one week, four hundred for two weeks, six hundred for three weeks. You pay by the week, and you can basically pay by the month if you choose the top amount offered there. But I usually like to just pay one week at a time, just in case, because it also helps remind me that I need to pay it, you know, because I'm very forgetful, and I can I can remember just every week. <laughs> I don't need to go longer than that. But yeah, anyway, just showing you this place, and this is where you rent your Shoutcast, you buy it, and they send you a note card with all the information you need to put into your SAM broadcaster, which I will show you that in a bit as well. Here we have Sam Broadcaster. Um, before, uh, probably the most important thing you need to learn is about the encoders. Without encoders, you cannot broadcast to the people. Very important. Um, I already have two encoders created. Uh, one's for the 96 kilobyte, and one's for the 128. Uh, most people use 128. It's uh, the preferred DJ streaming kilobyte, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's just the best quality for the average listener. Uh, the bit rate 128. The sample rate is 44.1 kilohertz. Very important. Always set your settings to be like that. Because that's the way most places want you to stream. They prefer it that way. Um, I don't know if this is necessary, but I had that check marked and the automatic enabled. Whatever. I don't know what this means, but the guy I learned from had it set that way, so I'll just assume it's important. Uh, I use Shopcast because that's the service that I'm renting from this store. Uh, they give you the note card with your information, and I think it says in local chat whenever you actually buy it uh, with the note card uh, your streaming information will appear in the local chat so be sure to copy and paste that information to your note card so that you can remember it without having to come back and click on your box again to remind you what your uh, password is and all this information. Uh, yeah, so basically you get your information, type in your IP and your port, and your password, that stuff. Uh, now this is the part that might confuse people. Uh, the website URL uh, on Second Life it's not like an internet website. If you go up here, you see this bar, it says text stream, south kind of strings, blah, blah, blah. But when you click on it, aha, that's a URL, that's an HTTP, blah, blah, blah. What you do is you copy that and you paste it into your into your encoder information. 
right there where it says website URL. You copy and paste it into that, and then you click OK after you've got all that information typed in. And that should set up your encoder if you chose the bit rate and everything. Your encoder should be good to go. And it's the same way with static relays. When you're setting up a static relay, you probably want to choose. Uh, I don't really. Uh, I don't really know the difference between static relays, to be honest. But I just use the default because it's the default, and so it has to work right. Yeah. But anyway, you just click OK, and it'll tell you to type in your username and password. Blah blah blah. Bit rate. Actually, I don't think that was the way to go. Streamcast, maybe? I don't think... I don't think the one that I chose... No, I should just use Shoutcast. Duh, because I'm using Shoutcast. Sorry, guys. I haven't done this in a while, so... My memory is a bit fuzzy, but yeah, use the Shoutcast Relay if you're streaming from a Shoutcast website. Duh. So yeah, type in your IP, your port, your password, and it creates your static relay. The static relay doesn't do much of anything except tell you how many listeners you have. So, yeah, mine says 0 out of 50 because I'm not even encoding right now. Uh, I'm not live. So, yeah, it says viewer 0, 0. Uh, the peak is how many listeners you had total. Not terribly important, but there you go. I will create a home. And I will set up my DJ stream to test out for you people. I don't know whether, uh, I don't know if it's important to start the encoder first or the music, but I usually just start the music first just so there's no dead air when you string. I'm just going to use the 96k right now. And there you go. You click the play button and it should say encoding. And the music should be playing. Everything is good to go. The only reason you can't hear anything right now is because I have the DJ volume which is this knob right here, all the way down. That means only me, the, list, uh, the DJ, cannot hear the music. This is your listener's volume. This is all the people out there listening to the stream. This is what they hear. It's very important you don't mess with that. You don't want people to hear silence. That is the worst thing that can happen to a DJ. Also, you do not mess with the volume in deck A or deck B. Leave it alone. Just let them listen to their music. They like it that way. Uh, another thing, the microphone. It's on. It's hot. Uh, you can do push to talk or toggle, which, you know, just right now I'm talking right now. And then Anybody that's listening to the stream can hear me right now until I click on it again and turn it off. Uh, a nifty feature with this is that you can turn the music volume 
to a lower set than the microphone volume so that the people can hear you but they still hear the music in the background. It's just a neat effect that all DJs seem to use because nobody likes dead silence and if you're talking they don't necessarily want dead silence in the background uh, in between your words or whatever. Like if you have pauses which I am guilty of having pauses because I take the time to think before I speak, which isn't the best thing for a DJ because I gotta be quick witted and stuff. But I do my best. Anyway, I think I covered everything the encoders, the static relay. You don't really need to know about the music history unless somebody asks you in chat about uh, what song that was or whatever. Then you need to know what you played. So AI history is for that purpose. Uh, the queue is obviously where the music that is going to be played is. Right now it's playing the gorillas. And next it'll play Skinny Puppy. Uh, and you can add songs. You can add them by file or you can add them by folder. This means that you add every song within a folder. And yeah, you can add playlists. You can save playlists. Like if I wanted to save this playlist right now, I click on this little down arrow and save this in M3U. I guess that stands for the playlist software that this Sam Broadcaster uses or something. But yeah, I think that's about the gist of it. I taught you all you need to know to DJ on Second Life. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or anything, feel free to ask. I will do my best to answer. I'm not necessarily a pro or anything. I just know enough to broadcast on Second Life with no trouble. And Ah, there was one thing I forgot to mention, and that is about the encoder's status. Every now and then, not often, but every now and then, I have came across the word air here while it's encoding. And if it says air, then the chances are your listeners are not hearing any music. Again, I remind you that this is the worst fate that could befall a DJ. If your listeners are not hearing music, they're not happy. And I wouldn't be happy either. So a good DJ always keeps an eye on the status of the encoding. If it says encoding, you're good. But if it says air, then I highly recommend you click on the encoder that says air then click the stop button, you wait until it says idle, and then click play again. That should solve your problem. And you, you just got to keep an eye on it, because if the listeners can't hear you, then that's not good enough, obviously. But yeah, that covers everything. I do believe I told you everything you need to know. Um, as I said before, if you have any questions, don't mind leave a comment, whatever. Uh, subscribe, like, whatever you like to do. I would appreciate it. And take care, everyone, and have a great day.